Today we're going to look at Brennecke's Special Forces Short Magnum Slugs. Wilhelm Brennecke invented the shotgun slug over 120 years ago in Germany. Yes, the first commercially available shotgun slugs. Today the company offers a wide spectrum of shotgun slugs based on that original design. Rather than offer one or two types of slugs, they have a, a wide variety of slugs, each very colorful and each with a very colorful name. Since the slugs vary in weight, velocity, and effective range, it allows the user to select the right slug for a specific task. It's almost like having a selection of golf clubs. Now one does have to wonder if some of this isn't just a little bit of marketing hype when you have something so specific as the anti-terror slug. After all, what is so special about this slug that one of the other slugs couldn't fill this role just as effectively? Yes, I am a big cynic, but that's just how I am. That 40 pounds of glass, ladies and gentlemen. That had recoil like a three inch magnum. <laughs> Let's have a look at the Special Forces short magnum. While it may seem like an oxymoron to call them a short magnum, I mean, it's kind of like saying short tall boy, right? But the idea is they're giving you magnum-like performance using a shotgun that isn't chambered for magnum shells. In the box says the power to stop almost anything. It shows a big old truck that you could stop in. It has a guy that looks like nothing fancy posing on there. Now these are two and three quarter inch shells and weigh one and a quarter ounces or 34 grams. And on the back we have a little chart showing the velocity and muzzle energy and notice how much energy it loses as it travels along. It loses almost 10% of its speed and 20% of its energy after only 25 yards. And even though it says Brennecke USA, these are indeed made in Germany. Today we're gonna to be shooting some uh, Brennecke Special Forces Short Magnum uh, yes, Matt V, these are TSA uh, operator approved. <laughs> we are, however, going to start out with uh, Generation 1. These are an older ones that I've been uh, wearing on my shotgun for a while, so I'm going to get rid of this one first. Same slug, though, right? Same exact slug. Okay. Just uh, without the flashy uh, Ferrari paint. Yeah, they just kind of, on the assembly line, ch -ch 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 -ch, sprayed <laughs> it like... And I'm sure they can charge you an extra dollar for that. Yeah, it is. it does make it easier to identify them, though, than just having a black slug. It's like, what are... And especially after it wears off, you can't... You know, the writing has worn off, so you don't really know what you have anymore, but the, it's very identifiable, even in low light. First target is a jet ski battery. Hit it! <laughs> now there's something we didn't expect. Now this was the shell that Greg had for a couple of years. Notice it was very accurate. The slug stayed together and the results were very impressive. What we didn't expect was this battery just to explode like that. It didn't have any acid or anything like that and it had been rinsed out and everything and it took us quite a while to clean up this mess. Now this old Special Forces slug performed great, so how will the new ones perform? Will they be as good? Let's find out. You decide. Are you ready for the robot invasion? Hard drives. Oh. Hit it. Wow. Oh, they came apart. Wow. Now, computer hard drives are a great target. They're very complex. They're very tough. And if you watch my old videos where we shot these before with other slugs, you know that a slug will only go in a, just a couple drives. You will notice a big difference in this shot, though, with the external ballistics. That slug and the wadding did not stay together. That slug was not as accurate as the first one. Tape, we taped that thing up so it wouldn't fly apart. <laughs> There's your entrance and exit wound. This one is where the slug actually embedded itself. It turned from red into a lead, lead Let me slug. see that. Lead. Wow. And then dented number three. Dented it enough that it actually dented number four. Too. Wow. A little bit off. I don't know if this was facing up or what, but... I don't know. I, eh. I aim for center mass, but yeah. you know, after that first shot, I'm oh, like flinching. Like a, the wadding or something hit right here, somehow. Yeah, yeah, uh, who knows how that happened. Yeah. Okay, brake disc, disc brake, whatever you want to call it. 
Okay, hit it. Wow. Right, show, up, show the side, just show how thick that is. That oh, is so oh, thick. oh. I see, you notice a crack on it? Yeah, I just I noticed it when I picked it up. Crack, okay. Cracked in the back, a hell of a good splatter and a little bit of an indent, but man, that did not make it through. Nope, very tough. So if jihadis are attacking your home, do not shoot their brakes out. Ready? Okay, hit it. Now once again we see the separation of that gas piston and the main body of the slug. That definitely is throwing off the accuracy of these things. Now since these are supposed to be able to stop a diesel truck, we were really expecting these slugs to just blast a hole right through this brake rotor. So needless to say, we we're a little bit disappointed with the performance of, of this slug at this point. Lead plate with an exploding pressurized bottle behind it. Wow. Okay, hit it. Ready? Yep. Wow. Now the lead plate has been kind of a fixture in our slug testing videos for quite some time. Now this is the only slug that we shot of this new batch that actually stayed together like it's supposed to. Despite that though, the accuracy was still a little bit low, wasn't quite as bad as the other ones but overall damage wasn't very impressive. It burrowed in there, but not really any different than any of the other lead slugs we fired, or the steel slugs we fired at this. Lots of, you know, it looks like there's some of the red paint. Mm -hmm. Almost. What it didn't do, there's hardly even a bulge back here. There's a little brick residue where it was. Look, look, look at the dent from the brick though. Yeah. That's, that's from the brick. Where it was mounted up against there. Yeah, it oh, chipped, there chipped the brick a little bit. However, high pressure bottle still intact. Yeah, be careful, it might blow up on you <laughs> in at any hand. moment. Yeah. Let's do a little flashback looking at the Gwalandi Thunderbolt. Yeah. Now this thing flew great and it was pretty accurate. It just blasted right through our lead plate in this shot. Okay, what application would a law enforcement or military use these for? You can clearly see on a box, they're designed to stop a motor so if you're ever attacked by a mini bike Mujahideen, <laughs> we're gonna shut him down. This is the biggest motor we could find and bring out to our, our classified can, shoot Can we site. start it? Oh, it doesn't run. No, I'll, I'll get it started here in just a second. Little, oh. a little, <laughs> okay, can it stop a mini bike? Aloha snack bar. <laughs> Hit it. Oh. <laughs> So here's our little shot cup, burrowed itself in, and then here's our little piece of red wadding, which is really in Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can get the light in there, it actually... I see a hole all the way through it. Yeah, it went in that cylinder, and there is light on the other side. Yeah. Oh, be damn. I, I would have thought it would be oh, a bigger hole. Here we go. Can you get your, uh, I don't know if your, your view will get down in there, but see that? perfectly quarter shaped yeah we can maybe rotate it to get a little more can you uh i don't want to be get some more light. light like that there we go maybe down there, there we go it's hard to see this now there was pretty substantial damage to this little engine but it's a far cry from a diesel engine which this <laughs> slug is marketed to be able to stop once again we see the separation of the gas piston and the main body of the slug Little things like that will affect the ballistics quite a bit. Now we were shooting maybe 15 to 20 yards away tops. You know, you move that back another 50 yards, you'll probably miss it completely. Now all these shots were done with a smoothbore shotgun, which is really what the slug is designed to shoot out of, though it will tolerate a rifle barrel. Now as a comparison, this slug weighs just about the same as the Special Forces slug. Let's see how this one performs. Now the dangerous game slug. We'll see how it does. Same scenario. Iraqi small engine repair. Yep. Ready? I'm ready. Boy, right off the top. Ready? I'm ready. Boy, right off the top. Tilt it a little. Like the lips. Yeah, tilt it back a little bit. Did it go through it? 
Well, I don't think it went all the way through. I don't think it went through there, but... Put a hole right in the cylinder, though. Now, this DGS-12 slug, I loaded myself, and I loaded it pretty mild. It maybe was going 1,300 feet per second. Now, in retrospect, and I'm sure you're feeling the same way, is why didn't we shoot a, you know, just a foster slug, a two and three quarter inch foster slug with a velocity of about 1,500 feet per second? I think it would have far exceeded the damage and accuracy of the Brennecke Special Forces slug. And sometimes I just kick myself in the pants for not remembering to test something like that. Sorry about that. Now we definitely know what the capabilities of the Brennecke Special Forces Short Magnum Slug is now. And we learned that it looks like they have a manufacturing flaw in their new red uh, design. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. All my friends in the southeast affected by the hurricane, please stay safe, guys. Thanks for watching.